Hi there, my name is Andy Ismaili, and in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of some of the new features and improvements that you can expect to see in the Surface Drill and Blast design tools in Micromine 20.5. So let's begin by trying to create a basic pattern. So I'm going to click on the Create Blast Pattern tool, and as you can see, um, it looks predominantly the same as before, but now you can specify the name of the block that you're creating from within the form. And this essentially enables uh, better management of the blocks within a database and improves the workflow that you can adopt. Um, you can still manually define the extents of a pattern, or you can use this new interactive method where you can essentially display this grid and use it to um, define the extents of the pattern and essentially look at what the extents implications will be on the number of holes, uh, the pattern area, and the number of rows, because, because those things are reported um, at the bottom right of Micromine in the status bar. Oh, you can also, uh, it also reports the total drilling depth, and that's obviously based on the depth of the drill holes, which is nice. Um, so that gives you like a basic um, idea of what the pattern that you might be creating will uh, look like. So one last thing I'll mention about this feature is that as you modify the properties of the pattern, the interactive grid is automatically updated, which is quite nice. And you can, of course, collapse the Micromine form so that you can interact with VizX during the design process. Now, moving on to the next feature, in the Hole Location and Parameters tab, we have this new Hole Attributes button. And if you click on that, you see this window. And what this allows you to do is define additional attributes and assign values to those attributes. And then these attributes are written onto the drill holes that are created. So for example, I may want to create an attribute for my co the cost of my boosters, my detonators, my consumables, the drill rig that's being used to drill these holes, and the cost per meter of the drilling. So let's just say my boosters cost $3.5 each, 13.5 for the detonators, 15.0 for consumables. This is my drill rig that's going to be drilling these holes or is planned to drill these holes and it's 3.5 meters per, $3.5 per meter of, to drill this. So I'm gonna create this pattern and as you can see, those attributes are created and assigned to these holes. Now the benefit of this, or one of the benefits of this is that now I can post-process the file associated with the, these drill holes via the report generator to create custom reports. So I'll show you that now. So I've just loaded up a different database which um, consists of more drill holes um, associated with different dig blocks or mining blocks because that allows me to demonstrate a better example what I'm about to show you is that I'm going to the report generator and I'm specifying, let me just load the first example. So I've basically specified the color file associated with the database. And I've set up the report generator so that I can ascertain which drill rig was involved in the drilling of which holes in which mining blocks or dig blocks. So I won't get into the specifics of setting up the report generator. But as you can see, um, referencing the attributes that I defined um, during the pattern creation process in the report generator. So the benefit of def defining those attributes during the pattern creation process is that you can use them here to create these custom reports. So let's look at this report. So what I've done here, uh, as you can see, the report outlines for each dig block, which drill rig was involved in the drilling of which hole types, the number of holes, that were drilled for that hole type and the total cost. So the cost is based on the cost per meter that I defined during my pattern creation process, and so is the drill rig. So this highlights an example of why that feature is quite useful. Now let me show you another example. So let's look at something to do with blasting. So this is the interval file associated with the drill hole database. Um, and in this case, what I've tried to do is for each dig block, I just want to get a summary of the cost of the explosives, the sum of the costs of the explosives, um, the sum of the costs of the 
detonators, the boosters, and any other consumables. So again, these, these fields are fields that I defined and um, uh, assigned values for during the pattern creation process, as I showed you earlier. And now I'm just utilizing them in the report generator to compile custom, a custom report. So as you can see for each dig block, what Micromine has done is given me a sum of the mass of the explosive used, the cost, um, and the sum of the cost for each one of these consumables. So that's the benefit of using this feature here. Of course, there may be others, but that's one of the main ones. So the next feature we're going to look at is a totally new design tool that's aimed to ease the creation of patterns within irregular dig blocks such as these or these, so trim shots or irregular shapes. Um, so let's look at how it works. So I'm going to click on the Create Pattern by Polygon, and Micromind asks me to select a reference line. So let's look at creating a pattern for the 17013. So the reference line um, is used to ascertain the profile of the rows that are going to be added into this polygon. So I've selected my reference line, and now let's look at the options. So I can specify the block name. I can specify the burden spacing, all the standard design constraints or parameters. Now there's two methods in which this thing works. The first one is the maintained spacing distance. And what this does is it ensures that the spacing value that you specify is always obeyed. So let's preview a potential result. Maybe let's change this to four by 5.5. Click on preview. Looks nice. Let's say we're happy with that and we're going to create that. Okay, now let's try something different. Let's try the 170.10. Actually, let's look at the 170.09 because it provides a better example of what I'm going to talk about next. Um, so let's talk about the used burden limits. Uh, 170.09. Okay, so the way this works is that um, when you have polygons with uh, sharp bends or sharp sections. Now this one isn't too bad, but it's still an example. Um, it may be geometrically impossible to satisfy both your design burden and spacing around these sections where the bends are or sharp sections are. So what happens is Micromine allows you to specify a minimum and maximum burden. And in placing the rows of holes, uh, Micromine ensures that the burden between the rows is within this tolerance, um, but as close as possible to the burden distance. Um, so let's look at how that looks. Just minimize that. And if I was to measure the distance, for example, from this hole to that row, you'd find that it's very close to four, but it may be just a little bit um, below four or uh, above four, but of course within these tolerances. Now the add infill holes, as you can see, there are some gaps here at the end of the rows. Um, the reason for that is, is if Micromine was going to add another hole here, it would not um, obey this 5.5 meter spacing value. So the add infill holes can be used to essentially fill these gaps, but in some cases you may find that those holes don't satisfy your spacing value. Now this is beneficial because um, it eliminates the need to go back and manually add um, individual drill holes in these um, gaps. Uh, uh, you can essentially use this, and if you're not happy with the position or the location of these infill holes, you can go through and quickly delete them. Uh, so the last thing I want to show you is new options in the uh, blast plots. So you can see this new grid and what it allows you to do is select the properties that you want to include in the summary table in the blast plot. Um, uh, this is done for the active block that you're plotting. So you can uh, plot, uh, basically summarize all the properties of the drill pattern um, and they can be broken up by hole type. So if I've got batter holes, buffer holes and production holes in the 17016, the summary table will be, will be broken up by hole type. <laughs> So let's look at how that plot would look or how that summary table would look. So here um, we're summarizing the number of batter holes and the properties associated with those batter holes. 
um, uh, the buffer holes and the production holes. And then there's a database summary which uh, summarizes the number of drill holes in the database, um, the total drill meters, sub drill meters, and mass explosives. And this is what the plot looks like. Um, that's all I really wanted to show you today. Um, there's a lot more, obviously, but these are the key points. Um, we look forward to getting your feedback about these new features and improvements and working with you to continually improve our BLAST design tools in the near future. Thank you.